Wow. Ah. Good morning. Morning. I don't know what time zone you're in, but hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, TK. Hey, uh, Larry, how's it going? Good everybody. Look at all these pretty faces. I didn't shave for today's thing. You know. There's just, the proud dad. I am the proud dad. I am. There's my auto shirt, one of them. That's cool. It's Merv. Larry. Oh my gosh. How, How are, are you, you, buddy? I'm awesome. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, buddy. We got oh, and you too. And you too, ought to toe. I'm sorry. I'm looking at Craig. Ah, to, 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 to. <laughs> <laughs> that is how you say it. Ah, to, 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 to. Oh, good. The other Canadians here. We're in. The, we're hey, now in the majority. How you oh, there's doing? There's another Canadian. Oh my gosh, they're all here. <laughs> slowly taking over. Very slowly. I like it. I like it a lot. So I don't want to uh, start the. Uh, um, <laughs> on an absolutely horrible note. Uh oh, I know. Um, there you go. There uh, you go. Do you guys remember Andy and Gina? Andy. Yes. Andy Sokol passed away yesterday. What? No. Are you kidding. No. Oh him. no. What happened? Uh, from what I from what Gina said, he had like bronchitis. Oh jeez. And um, it probably turned into COVID. He was sick for a week. She's not even sure he had COVID, I think. Uh, it was kind of sketchy. But uh, he just died in his sleep right next to her. Oh, geez. Oh. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. No Sorry, I'm late. Who? Uh, Andy Sokol. Uh, he was in my, he's still in my mastermind, Andy and Gina. Oh, thank uh, you. still in my mastermind, but they've been in my mastermind since, like, way back. Wow, <laughs> so many transitions in a few days. I, I can't handle this anymore. Can't handle it. So yeah, I talked to Gina for like an hour and a half last night. And um, I'm not even sure I'm supposed to say anything yet, but it was like two days, well, it was last night, uh, oh, sure, sure two nights know. ago. But um, let her tell you guys in, at her time, at her pace. But I, she's told Tim Gillette, she's starting to tell people. So I figure it's getting out. You know? Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very sad. Yep. So I didn't really want to start on that note, but no. um, but I figured, you know, it's fair to share information because uh, she needs prayers. You know? Yeah, she sure does. She and sure. how is, yeah, lots of people to think of. How's your mom doing? She's doing, um, well, good. As You know, she's getting used to it, I guess, right? Um, uh, but she's doing good. The first, you know, first two days, obviously crazy, but better. You know, and you know what she's doing now? She's keeping busy with all the, um, what you do, I guess, when someone passes away, all the uh, paperwork and all stuff. Tons of paperwork. Tons of paperwork. Right. So transferring over all the deeds and the, the, his uh, pension, all that stuff. So she's doing that. So that's keeping her busy. So that's good. That'll last a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. <sighs> I know. And we don't even know when we're doing a memorial now because of COVID. It's just a messy, messy, messy. Yeah. Yeah, but it's good to have Larry Broughton in the house. It is yep, yep. Yay, Larry! There we go. Larry has a lot of friends in our mastermind. He's, I do. he's been with us since 1926, I think it was. <laughs> it's feeling like that these days. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and uh, but I uh, called him yesterday, and I, I said, what better person to have talk right after my dad passes away? And I mean that in all complimentness. That is what you said. Too, yes, yeah. I did. I said, uh, I'm going back to my, my, my strong rock, Larry Broughton. So uh, uh, most of you know him. Um, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's uh, a former Green Beret. Uh, he's uh, done a lot. He owns, like, he uh, manages uh, hotels all across the US. Um, he has an office in Orange County, California. Two amazing kids that are so old now, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Because last week they were 10 and now they're like oh, I don't know. Right, right and remember the dog, <laughs> the dog. but uh please give a, a little rock star welcome to mr larry brock hello my friend hello well how do you want to do this craig i would just uh like i um well 
why don't we tell because there are some people there's new people here too wait a minute wait a minute adam ace as adam ace out of, of town no <laughs> no wait i gotta see i gotta see if he's hiding oh he's hiding adam hey, adam put your camera on what's oh, happening everybody oh my goodness this the band is, is back so together. exciting the band is back together <laughs> let me tell you I only get 30 minutes of internet per week here from prison. And I chose to use it for this meeting right here. I love it. I am so excited that Donnie Deutsch is going to be the guest speaker today, Craig Bevel. <laughs> and I wouldn't joke, my spend <laughs> my internet time on anybody else except for somebody the level of Donnie Deutsch. Is he coming? Know. He's yeah, he's, no, that's why I'm here. I'm stepping in. I'm, I'm in. No, we, we got the we got the uh, the replacement for Donnie. <laughs> What's that? Are you okay with that? I'm sorry. Um, all right. Uh, see you later, everybody. <laughs> You're a jerk. <laughs> yeah. So as you can see, Adam is our um, house comedian. He's been uh, in my mastermind since 1926. Also, um, yeah. Well, Craig, I was sharing with um, a friend of mine the other day just about you. So it was very great, I guess, you had called because it was just so it was two days ago, I guess, about how you and I had met that you and I were in a mastermind yep. uh, together. Um, it was the mastermind where you conceived this whole That's empire. That's right. That, it was James, James Malinchak. Yeah, yeah. You felt uh, at this point. Yeah. yeah. And um, so it's been a long time uh, that, that we've known each other. So. It's good to see some familiar faces with uh, Barbara and Joe and Merv and TK and Carrie and oh, Judy good luck and naming them all. Whoever else is on on here, Mike, um, Adam mm, is all right. Um, but um, yeah, so it's good to see everybody on here. Yeah, it's so, great to see you too, my friend. Yeah. So you know, uh, why don't I just give a little bit of yeah, background well, on how the heck this thing exactly. even happened, right? So I got a call yesterday from Craig. He said, "Hey, can you hop on here?" Uh, to help out with uh, the mastermind folks. Um, Craig and I have been, I would just say, mentors and confidants for each other for a lot of years. Um, if there's something regarding marketing that's outside my wheelhouse, I talk to Craig. If there's something in the entrepreneur space that's outside his wheelhouse, he'll contact me. And I think that's the way life is supposed to be led, right? Um, and I'll be really honest with you. Adam and I uh, used to talk all the time and I'm bummed. You're one of those dudes, guys, that I was just thinking about the other day. Like, I've got to find Adam. I've got to talk to him again because I think it's been over a year since you and I spoke. It has been. So it's crazy what, what has happened. A Adam, uh, Adam talks to my wife more than he talks to me. I think they're having an affair. Uh, I was that just is, say, you might want well, to- Well, part of that is true. I'll let you figure out which part is the true part. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, here's the, what I've learned over the years is that um, I used to just do entrepreneurial mentoring. I've been doing that for about 20 some some years at this point as my dog Bodie comes in. Hello, Bobo. Hello, um, Bobo. Yes. And um, so how did all this stuff happen? I'm going to get into it here. I, I wasn't going to do a presentation. I was just going to riff a little bit. But I decided about an hour ago, I was going to pull a few slides in from a few different presentations just to get the wheel spinning. I think we might have more fun if we do... Q and A's sure. later on. So let me go through a bunch of slides quickly here. It'll give some background about who I am, what I do uh, at this point. And I think that might be kind of, kind of helpful. That would be great. As, as I had said, I used to just do entrepreneurial coaching. And for me, I used to be a real hard ass. I'm still tough, I think, but I do it with love. Um, and, but I used to be all about the bottom line. What's your inventory turn? What's your balance sheet look like? You know, that kind of stuff. And then I started realizing people, and because of me, <laughs> when Craig and Adam and I met and we were very dear friends, I was still married. Um, and that was the attitude that, that I had. It's all make money. And I realized that didn't work for me. And it wasn't working for a lot of people mm -hmm. that I knew. Um, and so I'd realized life begins after the bottom line, you know? And um, and so I started switching and sort of realizing that we don't have an entrepreneurial problem in this country. We have a leadership problem in, in this country. And so I really started speaking and writing on leadership topics. And um, 
and I feel pretty blessed. CBS News did an interview with me and said that um, I happen to be the nation, one of the nation's foremost leaders on entrepreneurship or leader uh, experts on entrepreneurship and leadership. So that was pretty cool. But I'm going to kind of dive into this if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, like I'm going to share my screen. screen. Can you do me a favor? If you if you're on here, will you turn your camera on? Here's why. Imagine you're doing a presentation to folks and you look at your screen and it's all black. All right. Um, I encourage you have your have your camera on so that we can see you because I promise you, your speaker will always do better if they can pick up on your energy. All right. If I see you, everybody like sleeping, it's like, maybe I ought to pick up the pace here <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> All right. If you're leaning in and nodding, I said, okay, maybe they want a little more information. All right. There's a pro tip for, for the day. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to share my screen here if I can. Yep. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Whoops. All right, how is that side Perfect. and everything for, for you guys? Perfectly. All right, good. Hey, um, I wrote down Andy Sokol. I've got to move that. Man, my heart goes out uh, to Gina on that. I remember when they were just dating and they were writing their books about Mr. and Mrs. X. X, remember that, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. They, they were the through. adventure guides. They, they, they tried a lot of things. They tried a lot of things, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But they end up, there's a story in there, right? We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. But sometimes we're on a journey and sometimes our brand finds us. But I want to encourage you, you know, find me on social media at, uh, at Larry Broughton um, on, on most of them, right? But before we dive into this, I just want to give you a warning. Avoid this IAKT syndrome, okay? And I know that some of you have seen me talk. And I guarantee every presentation I do, I remind people of this nasty syndrome. I already know that, <laughs> okay? Imagine if you're having a conversation with your significant other and um, he or she is just giving you the riot act about picking up your dirty laundry or taking out the garbage and you put your hand up and say, ugh, I already know that. What are you telling your significant other? <laughs> I don't wanna hear anymore, I'm done listening, right? Stop doing that. Instead, what I want you to do is take a deep breath. If you've heard what I've said before, I just want you to take a deep breath, open your mind, and embrace TFTR. Ah, thanks for the reminder. All right, how many times have you read a book? How many times have you seen a movie more than once? And each time you read that book, each time you see that movie or that TV episode, you pick something else up, right? You pick up a new nugget of information. Well, why is that? Well, it's because you need to hear that, all right? For those who have kids or have been a kid, you've probably heard this before. I mean, you, you've got, like I've got, as uh, Craig said, I've got two kids. One of them is still in the house, 17 year old boy or young man. Believe me, his room, walking into his room every day, I've got to remind him every day, you know, about picking up the crap off the floor and getting organized. We don't do things we know we should do the first time we hear it, right? And so this is a reminder, you've all heard this before, and I'm gonna say it over and over again, success leaves clues. We have to connect the dots in life, okay? We have to connect the dots. And so when we're listening and we're looking at the themes and we're seeing um, stories unfold in front of us, there's a message that's being told. So pick up on those themes that we're discussing. Um, when you hear two or more achievers say, two or more high achievers say the same thing, listen up. Um, and Adam, I'm going to give you a quick little story. Um, Adam Ace brought up Donnie Deutsch. I was on the Donnie Deutsch show a few times years ago. The first time um, was when he had, well, twice, the first two times was his show that was on MSNBC called uh, The Big Idea with Donnie Deutsch. He's the first one who ever told me, Larry, you need to put these, and I'll, I'll give you a, a clue, flashpoints into a book. I'll show you what my flashpoints are here in a minute. The next time was, um, so Donnie Deutsch, if you guys don't know, used to run the largest marketing firm in the US called Deutsch Inc., Def Jam Records. Um, who else? Lexus, Revlon were all their clients, plus a lot of other ones. And he's got some great books out there on marketing as well. But then uh, Darren Hardy, former publisher of Success, Success Magazine said, Larry, you need to put these flashpoints into a book. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. Seven years later, I put them into a book. It <laughs> took me a while to get there, but I did it. 
What I want to talk to you today is about a chapter from my most recent book. I'm working on another one right now, but it's a chapter called Freedom Road. And what I really talk about is how pain and suffering create meaning and legacy in your life. And so what I want you to do is just get in your time machine. All right. Go back to December 2019 and January 2020. Do you remember that? This was like the end of the first decade of this new century. Do you remember all the memes that were going around back then? They were all like this, right? I'm ready. I'm going to go take on the year. Remember this? Mm -hmm. And it was inspiring, right? I remember I did like three keynotes in January, February, and March uh, up until I think my last keynote in 2020 was March 5th uh, of that year. And what did 2020 end up being like? This, right? It hurt, right? You've probably seen some of these memes. If 2020 was a scented candle, it looked like it smelled like this, right? If 2020 were a pinata, right? <laughs> This one, try to, oh. if, the past, if the past 18 months were a slide, right? All right, this next one, you may want to avert your eyes if you have any kind of dental issues. Take a quick look at that. If the past 18 months were a meme, oh, right, I just get chills. <laughs> oh, oh my God, no. Yes, yes. I told you to avert your eyes, delicate oh. Craig, oh. right? All right, so what do all these have in common? What's the common den denominator? And if you want, you can type that into the chat. What do you think is the common denominator uh, of all of this? And I'm gonna be asking you questions throughout this. And let me turn on my chat here, move it over. Yeah, um, I'm on a PC without a camera. No problem, no, if you've got a camera, that's that's fine, that's fine. Okay. Yes. Pain. Who said pain? I saw a couple of pop. Roger said pain. Stephanie said pain. Yes. Yeah. Craig shitstorm. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. So what was the common denominator? Pain and suffering. Pain. Pain and suffering. When we look back at 2020 and obviously much of 2021, it's been pain and suffering. All right. Now, Time, Gallup, Rasmussen, USA Today all do similar surveys each year. I've not seen one for 2020 nor 2021 yet, and I wonder why. <laughs> um, but they say this, 63%. 63% of Americans feel like our best years are behind us. They've been doing this survey for about two decades that I know of, and it's always in that same area, 61%, 64%. But let's say 63% of our fellow citizens feel like our best years are behind us. Do you agree with them? Yes? No? Maybe? You know, I personally think they're wrong. I, I, I'm a big believer in uh, personal responsibility. You know, I'm, you know, politics aside, um, I think that we do have a lot of control over our, our own destiny. Um, but, but what's the answer if 63% of our fellow citizens feel like the best years are behind us. Or maybe you are one of those people who feel like our best years are behind us. What's the answer? And you can type it in the chat if you want, or you can just chime in, right? Um, what, what's the answer to all of this? I'm going to tell you what I think the answer is. You know, I've already given you the clue. It's you. It's me. We're the ones who are going to change this business, Okay. So why are you guys here? And I do want you to put this in the chat. Why did you guys take time out of your call today or out of your busy schedules today to get on this call? Why do you fly across the country when you can to join Craig, his masterminds and spend three to five days away from your busy lives, from your families, from your business? Why do you do that stuff? Type it into the chat if you would. Accountability. I see. Um, learn, grow, connect uh, for the people. What do you mean by that, Judy? For the people uh, to stay connected, motivation, friends, growth, and ACE, of course, ACE, um, carry, uh, motivation, uh, up leveling, be around uh, like minded people, life transition, keep on learning, uh, intellectual curiosity, always looking to share, joyful affirmations. Um, these are going, these are good. To learn from the best, uh, collectively bring business tobacco better place collectively bringing business tobacco better place 
Got it. Got it. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry if I'm missing that one. No, Maybe no, no, no. I think it was a misprint. <laughs> putting the emphasis in the wrong place. To be a better something. Yeah. Wanted great ideas, inspiration. Okay. Love to mastermind. Yes. Okay. Got it. All right. So why are we here? I think if we were to boil all of that down, don't you just want to be a great person? Don't you just want to do great things in your life? I am a big believer that if you want to do great things, you've got to be a great person. We all want to build legacy, right? But we fall short oftentimes. We don't do the hard work that it takes to become a great person. So what I want to do is just quickly go over, like, who am I now, as, as uh, Craig was asking earlier. So I've got this book called Flashpoints that I did several years ago. Um, these are all a variety of uh, public hate, uh, styles of publishers, okay? So the Flashpoints book, the Victory book is self-published. The Boots to Business book is government publishing. That's through the, the, um, the SBA. The top book introduction to business ownership is university press publishing through Syracuse University. Um, Flashpoints and Victory are bestsellers. Got a hotel company, um, as uh, Craig had mentioned earlier, done lots of media uh, stuff, uh, a pretty good amount of TV. Um, and um, I always have to say this, it was actually Adam Ace who told me I need to start <laughs> talking more about this stuff, but I'm sorry I can't hear you over the sound of how awesome uh, I am. If I don't share this stuff with you, and there's a lesson in here for you guys, if I don't tell you what my background is, if I don't tell you what uh, street cred I have, who's going to, mm -hmm. right? You have to be able to tell your own story. And a lot of us don't like doing that. A lot of us, you know, think, well, it's going to sound braggadocious. It's going to look, it's going to sound like I'm, you know, talking myself up. Yes, you do have to do that in business. The people who are in your day-to-day -day life know that you're not a jerk. They know that you're not, you know, being a pompous ass. Um, but people who don't know you, they need to know their credibility. As Jonathan Sprinkle says, who's a good friend of many of ours, people will not listen to you until they know you, Right. So you have to tell the story, all right? So shameless plug, yes, victory book. It's out there, it's on the screen. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, working with Craig and a lot of other folks um, in the, you know, about how to do this stuff, I sell a lot of these damn books. I, yeah. And I'm not exaggerating. I just shipped off a shipment of books, um, $24,000 worth of books. Nice. All right, that's one order. And that just happened, okay? Um, I make more from this darn book than a lot of people make just in their salary each year. Write your book. If you've not written a book, write your book. Craig's got a great program on how to get a book done quickly, all right? If Adam Ace can write a book, you can write a book, all right? Even do a comic book. I love the comic books that, uh, that Adam used to do, okay? So who's the real Larry Broughton? Because that other stuff, yes, that's who I am, right? That's part of my life. But um, so I'm a twin. I grew up in rural New York. Um, how many people think I'm the guy on the left? Type in left if you think I'm the guy on the left. Oh, you, you can see it. It's got my name on the damn thing. Yes, I'm the guy on the left. <laughs> I was going to say, your license plate has your name on license it. License <laughs> plate. Never mind. Okay. So yes, I'm the guy with a disproportionately large head. All right. Um what got me through school, through high school, was sports. And I wasn't even really that good uh, at, at sports. Um, but I was a great, I cheered my team members on. I happened to be captain of our, or co-captain of our wrestling team. Dutch Sturdivant is that cool guy with the groovy collar uh, on the left there. And what he used to scream at us constantly was pain builds character. Get that in your head for a second. Pain builds character. If we go back and just listen, all right, what were all those memes that we just got through looking at? 2020, if we survived 2020 and 2021 thus far, if you're alive and you're putting any kind of effort into your life, you've got stronger character now than you did 18 months ago, all right? Pain builds character. I hated hearing that then, but it really made a lot of sense when I turned 30, okay? Pain builds character. Prior to that, I um, spent a lot of time in martial arts the motto of our martial arts studio was only those who can see the invisible can do the impossible. 
And for me, that talked about vision, having the vision to see um, where life could be, the possibilities in life. And it was there that I really started learning, and this is good for us as entrepreneurs and leaders, everything is hard until it gets easy. This is the thing I have to pound into my son's head all the time, uh, because you know he's one of these guys who just, if it doesn't come really easy to him, he doesn't want to do it because he's afraid he's going to look like a, he's going to be foolish, right? But everything is hard until it gets easy. Your new, your latest marketing initiative that you're trying to launch, your new business idea, um, a new skill that you're trying to develop, it's going to suck at times, all right? It's going to be hard until it gets easy. Um, but from there, I decided I was going to join the military. I'd heard uh, back in, I was at a national martial arts tournament out here in California, and I'd heard that the Army was going to be putting up a Taekwondo team for the 1984 Olympics. And so I thought, well, I want to try to get on that martial arts team. Um, but um, I ended up going in and speaking to the Army recruiter, took the ASVAB. There's a great story I could tell you one day about this. But I ended up enlisting and um, trying out for the Green Berets. And um, this was a poster that the recruiter gave me that I carried around in my pocket for years. Um, and it says, it says more about you than you'd ever say about yourself. Um, and so I asked the question oftentimes, what do you have that reminds you of what your mission in life is? What's your talisman? What can you touch that says, here's why I'm on this earth. Here's what my mission is. You know, sometimes you might have things hanging on your walls or, or whatever it is, but you've got to have that. But when I was going through the special forces qualification course, and if you're interested in seeing how tough this course is, the discovery channel has a, a program that's called uh, two weeks in hell. Now the, the course is not two weeks. The course is about a year, but there's a two week tryout called the selection and assessment phase to even try out. So you have to try out to try out. And I remember being in this hand to hand combat pit in the middle of the night. Um, we're doing log drills. You've probably seen them on TV and those kind of things. And they're spraying water on you. And the cadre was screaming this pain is weakness, leaving your body. Mm. Pain is weakness leaving your body. Now, if you think back to what Coach Dutch Sturdivant used to say, what was that? Anybody remember? Pain builds character, mm -hmm. right? And I remember it was like a lightning bolt came out of the sky and hit me in this hand-to-hand -hand combat pit when I remember Dutch Sturdivant screaming that at us. And then these the cadre who were old, broken-down Green Berets who were teaching new wannabe Green Berets, I thought, damn, Right. If two or more high achievers say the same thing, I had to listen up. So what did that what was the message I got? If it is worth having, it's worth fighting for. It's worth grinding it out for. It's worth the suffering. Right. The great things in life aren't just handed to us. OK, we have to fight and struggle, but we've got turned into this bubble wrap culture. If it's hard or if our feelings are getting hurt, then we don't want to push forward. That's wrong. That's wrong. Well, the, the good news is this. If everyone else is doing that, then we've got an opportunity to pass them by. Okay. So that was then I graduated. That was my graduation day. Yes, I did make it. But I showed up at my team room at 10th Special Forces Group. And this saying was on the wall. Individuals play the game, but teams beat the odds. Mm -hmm. We get so seduced by this stupid lone wolf myth about entrepreneurship you know, oh, I can do it on my own, the rugged individualism, but no one does it by themselves. Thank goodness you folks are in a mastermind. You're in the right place, right? I've been involved with Craig in this, you know, watching his organization grow and been to many of the, the events. And you guys are awesome cheerleaders. Cheerleading, cheering helps. We have to have this in our lives. You've got to build uh, teams around you whose strengths augment your weaknesses. You've got to surround yourself with people who are bolder and brighter than you are. This is the Achilles heel for a lot of leaders. They feel like they have to be the brightest person in the room, right? If people, if more leaders would just be comfortable with knowing, hey, I'm the conductor here. I'm the one who put this team together. I don't have to be the smartest person mm -hmm. in the room. And if we would humble ourselves more to say, hey, I don't know. I simply don't know. But let me go find someone who does. This is why I love that. You know, I've got the courage to go to Craig when I when I'm feeling in over my head on some things, or he calls me and says, hey. What, what's going on? What should I do here? We have to be able to do that. If you're not doing it, you might as well. Well, you, you have to do it. I'll just I'll leave it at that. So I got out. I spent about nine years um, in special forces and um, I decided I wanted to get into the political arena, I thought. 
And so I'd moved to California. I was going to study political science. And this was the first place, the first job I got. I was a night auditor at a little no-tell motel in San Francisco. And um, my job was just to keep the peace among the drug dealers and the pimps and the prostitutes in the neighborhood. And some of those were my coworkers, by, by the way, um, literally. Um, and I'll tell you a story about that if you guys want to know. This was the first apartment building I lived in. I lived in the third floor um, in a studio apartment with two other guys. I worked at night. They worked during the day. And so I slept during the day when they were gone. And um, I'm going to tell you how hard it got. Um, and if you guys want to, know, want to know more, my how many people are on this call right now? Um, 30. All right. So odds are someone, I'm going to get serious here for a second. Um, Cause odds are pretty good that the experience I had, someone on this call has experienced it. I was out of the military for about two months at this point, living in this hovel, literally, if anybody knows San Francisco, this is at post and Polk um, in the tenderloin of San Francisco. <laughs> and I went from being in special forces, having, type A, hard charging people who pursued excellence in everything they did to being surrounded by people who just phoned in their performance. Mediocrity was okay. Um, hey, is it payday boss? That kind of attitude. And I felt like I was absolutely lost. And so one night after having a few drinks and um, a few Percocet and Vicodin, I went up on that roof and was standing on that edge. Oh, Odds are many of you have been there, not many of you, the 30 people on here, at least a couple of you have had those ideations in the past. My life sucked. Okay. Thank goodness I didn't do it. Obviously, I'm here talking to you today, but um, mm. life sucks sometimes. When you are working outside your strength, when you aren't feeling appreciated, um, when you don't have a mission or a calling in your life, when you're just wandering around, life feels very empty and hollow, right? So um, reach out to somebody. I'm available if anybody ever wants to talk about this, th this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, Joe DeChera, uh last week. Um, hey, um, so after being at that little motel for about six months, an investment group came in to buy the, buy the place and they decided they're going to renovate it and turn it into the country's first rock and roll hotel, one of the first boutique hotels in the country. <clears throat> in the country, We put a great restaurant in there. Um, all the staff was let go except for me um, because they were people just phoning in their, their performance. But during the uh, due diligence period, the, the new owner saw that I was busting my ass and doing what I could. And I didn't want to be in the hotel industry. All right. Um, but... Um, we ended up turning into this cool rock and roll hotel. I was asked to become a partner in this company. Um, I didn't even have hotel experience, um, but I did have leadership experience. I'm still an owner in this hotel today. Back then, when I was actually working there, Linda Ronstadt, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Rolling Stone, Lenny Kravitz, we're all staying, staying, staying there. In fact, I think the crew of Guns N' Roses stayed here. Uh, Air Supply did stay here. Wow. Um, yeah called the Phoenix Hotel. It's still there, guaranteed if you were to go there today, well, for this weekend, definitely, there'll be at least three tour buses in that parking lot. Um, so, well, maybe not with COVID going on, but anyway. Um, but it's a rock and roll hotel. And what I learned from this is that people are always watching. Craig talks about this. People are always watching you. Your attitude goes a long, long way. And I just had a positive attitude. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I had a positive attitude about it. And I just realized in life that a good attitude won't guarantee victory, but a bad one will guarantee defeat. Uh -huh. So a lot of these people who have gone through the past year and a half, and it's they're, they're walking around and proverbially kicking the dog and woe is me. And they've got this Eeyore attitude, you know, life sucks. You know, it'll never get better. Guess what? That's how it's going to be. And the other thing was this, and as a reminder, what I said earlier, if you want to do great things, you've got to be a great person. We have to work on ourselves, okay? Um, after being with that company for a while, I decided I was going to go out and start my own hotel company. And, um, and I made lots of mistakes along the way. But what I realized is that if you're not failing, you're not moving fast enough, or you're not moving close enough to your fullest potential, we have to start embracing this failure mentality, all right? Imagine that you are... Anybody ever taught a kid how to ride a bike? 
you can say yes. I see heads nodding on, on this. Hey, Merv, when you taught somebody how to ride a bike, the first time you pushed off, what happened? They went pedal, 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 and then what? And they crashed, right? right? And I know you, Merv. So what you probably did, you ran over to the child, you knelt down next to him, and you said, you suck. What the hell do you think you're doing? Whoever told you you could ride a bike? You are an absolute loser. Don't ever get on that bike again, right? That's what you did, right? No, I said, walk it off and get back on that bike. <laughs> Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> no. What do, you, what do you do? You do what we did in the military. They called it an AAR, an after action review. Very quickly. Hey, that was awesome. Here's what you did right. Here's what you did wrong. And here's how you can improve the next time. Isn't that basically the message? And you cheer them on, right? We need to be doing that for ourselves. We need to be doing that for each other. But the problem is some people are going to look at that as a failure. And it's not. Cheering helps. We have to. You can do it, okay? We have to cheer each other on. Sometimes what we call failure is really just that necessary struggle that we really, really ought to be calling learning. Mm -hmm. All right? Get this in, into your head. Learning is what fuels preparation. Okay. You're learning how to play basketball. You're learning how to play lacrosse. You're learning a new skill. All right. You're going to make mistakes, but it's getting you better. All right. It's fueling your preparation to do other things. Preparation is what fuels courage. This is the problem that a lot of these gurus out there have. All right. You go to their event, you get all inspired. You know, you get all motivated, but you're not building your competence. They're building your confidence first, mm. right? But they're not building your competence. Enduring courage comes from competence, not confidence. Does that make sense? Yes. To you? Okay. This is why some people have to keep going back. They, have to, they get addicted to these seminars because they're getting amped up on the adrenaline, but they're not building their competence. Okay. And courage, well, courage just changes everything. Okay. Courage is one of these things I think that we are lacking as a society. And I see less, well, until about, I don't know, recently, let's say the last couple of years, I was getting very fearful about who we were becoming as a, as a country, but it's courage that provides the wisdom to be humble. You know, with courage, we dare to take more risk, right? And like it or not, risk is one of these key ingredients to success. It's courage that helps us drive on in the face of lingering doubt and bad economic conditions. How many of us have wanted to give up recently, right? Courage sustains us on our journey towards our dreams and on our visions or towards our visions. And it allows us to move, you know, it allows us to, to love, frankly, more deeply and communicate more effectively. How many of us have avoided difficult conversations because we lacked courage you know at its root integrity is based on courage it's not easy but a leader without courage they're, they're impotent they don't deserve the honor to be an executive in any organization right so courage changes everything so what's the problem well we have to remove negativity from our team and from our life i think that these people who just suck our energy they're called energy vampires <laughs> Right. They just don't you have those types of people in your life. Oh, I used to have a ton baby. of them. Oh, baby. Until I just started exercising them. So what you what I want you to do, we're just going to go through this very quickly, is imagine the three most negative people in your life. Who are the people that are always the naysayers? Who are the ones who say you can't do it? They're, who are the ones who are saying, don't go in the deep waters, stay on the safe side. Imagine those three most negative people in your life. Next thing I want you to do is just emotionally or mentally bring the single most negative person in your life forward leave the other two people behind okay so you have that person in your mind you picture them don't say it out loud um i don't want to offend anyone but what studies have shown what clinical psychologists have shown is that most negative person is you mm. we have more negative chatter in our heads about our abilities and who we are as a person and what we look like than anyone else. We judge ourselves very harshly in life. Don't believe everything you think. We have to change the way we think. All right. So from my Flashpoints book, 
I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just the first part of this. If someone else talked to us the way we often talk to ourselves, we'd slap them. Would you allow anyone else to speak to you the way you speak to yourself? I was <laughs> Earlier today, somebody asked me to sh um, film a video testimonial for them. And it took me like 11 takes to get this thing right. And halfway through, I kept saying, you effing idiot, what are you doing? And I had to catch myself, right? <laughs> If someone came into my office and called me an idiot, an effing idiot, actually, is what I, I said, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't allow them to talk to me that way. But I allow myself or mm -hmm. allowed myself to talk to myself that way. We got to stop that. We have to replace this negative chatter with positive chatter. And so I'm going to get into that right now. And we're about to wrap up and we can go into questions. So if you've got questions, get them ready. Here's what I call my five-star strategies to create extraordinary life and business. Number one, we have to remove the negative chatter. All right, you have to replace it with positive stuff. If you want to see, I've got a little demonstration of this on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and type in Larry Broughton brain flushing. I've got a li little visual representation of this. Imagine you have a, 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 let's say a picture of muddy swamp water. And I say, okay, Craig, here's your picture of muddy swamp water. You need to make this crystal clear, but you can't tip the picture upside down. The picture of muddy swamp water represents your brain. How are you going to do that, Craig? You're going to pour clean water into it. You're going to pour more clean water into it. You're going to pour more clean water into it until it starts to dilute that muddy swamp water until all of a sudden, at some point, it's going to be crystal clear water in there. And all that muddy, stinky swamp water is going to be gone. Well, this is why you have to put positive stuff into your brain. This is why like, I've been on until very recently, maybe the last six months, I was on about a three year news fast and I am a political junkie. I love news. Okay. But I had to get that negative stuff out of my head. I just got to the point where I said, you know what, if there's a nuclear war, if we're attacked, someone will tell me, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'll find out. I'll tell okay? you. Yes. Right. <laughs> but we got to remove, remove the negative chatter. How do you do that? Through prayers, meditations, morning routines, Okay, next thing is this, you have to focus on your strengths. Stop worrying about those areas of weakness. Learn to manage your weaknesses, but focus more on your strengths. Do the Colby A index, take the Gallup Strength Finders assessments um, and find out what are your strengths. Those areas that you're weak, outsource those. Hire a VA, build a team around you, all right? But stop worrying about your weaknesses. Just manage your weaknesses. If you're good at some area, let's make that great. All right. Number three, take rapid action. This is one of those areas where more people have been let life pass them by by inactivity than anything else. We have to take rapid action. Right. You know, generally which direction you're going to go. Right. Don't worry, because you can always take course correction along the way. The hardest thing is the first initial momentum. Have you ever seen a car get stuck maybe in the snow or in the mud? The hardest thing is just getting the thing moving at first. But once you get that momentum going, things start really rolling for you. And it's the same thing, same way in life. All right. The fourth thing is this, expect and embrace failure. We had talked about this. All right. Just consider failure is really the opportunity for learning. Embrace it. All right. It needs to be a learning opportunity for you. And the last thing is this. Pursue excellence in everything that you do. How would your life be different if you pursued excellence in everything you do? This is what the Greeks call arete. And I'm so excited to start seeing this stoicism movement come back and the study of the cognitive brain, right? Um, we got so far away from that. That's a cognitive, conative. I'm, I'm glad we're starting to look at the cognitive brain, cognitive mind uh, again. Um, this is We'll talk about this here in, here in a second, I guess. But I know that's not easy. None of this stuff is easy. I get it. I get it. Okay. But life's not easy. Whoever told you that life is fair, <laughs> they lied to you. All right. Life is going to be tough. All right. There's going to be pain in it. All right. But if it's not worth having, it's not worth fighting for. So fight for it. Okay. I get it's not easy. Um, one of the things I started doing uh, a while ago, several years ago, is Everybody's got a to-do list, right? And we get drowned by our to-do list. But what we don't do, and this helps you with your stopping the negative chatter, um, is that sometimes we come home at night and we've not done any, nothing's gone. 
our way, right? We didn't make our bed that morning. We didn't do our morning routine. We yelled at the barista, you know, we kicked the dog. We did all kinds of bad stuff, right? But we've got to start focusing on what did we do right? Like our other to-do list should be our ta-da list. Ta-da. What did we do right? What were our small little victories that day? But we have to start our mornings out by saying, I'm going to be looking for little victories today. I'm going to be looking for the small miracles in life. I'm going to be looking for positivity out there in the world. Because the truth is, you will find what you are looking for. If you're looking for the negative, you will find the negative. If somebody's talking politics and you think the person's going to be a, you know, they're going to be a, a jerk. Yeah, you're going to be looking at that. You're going into the, the, the day with your fist up instead of your hands out or your arms open. Okay, to do list. I want to give you guys a little gift for staying with me. All right. I'm going to, so flashpoints is a daily journal. There's 365 of those little missives that I showed you uh, earlier. And there's a recording called Revealed Eight Mission Tested Strategies for Success in Life and Leadership. And I'm going to tell you this, and I am not exaggerating by any stretch of the imagination. This revealed recording, I'm going to. I'll be conservative on this. We've received over 80, maybe over a hundred emails or letters where people have said this saved my life mm. or the message in here totally changed the trajectory of my life. I've saved my relationship because of what's in here. Okay. That was the basis of what was going to be in a book, but it's just a one, I think it's about one hour recording. I want to give it to you. All right. All you have to do is open your text app and type, you know, the phone number is going to be 33444. If you want to do a screenshot of this, do that. Um, and then just text Larry B. All right, hit send. You're going to get a reply that says, give us your email address, and you'll get those immediately. Okay. That's for you. All Thank right. you, Larry. Yep. As I said, this is not easy. Marcus Aurelius, one of my favorite Stoics, uh, third great emperor of Rome, said this the art of life is more like wrestling than dancing. You will get an elbow to the chops once in a while. You will disla dislocate your shoulder, proverbally. Proverb, how is it? You get, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's going to hurt, okay, sometimes. This is not tiptoe through the tulips. Life is going to be hard sometimes, all right? But we can't do it alone. This is why you guys are here, okay? Surround yourself with people who are bolder and brighter than you are. This is why you're here, all right? Cheering helps. You can do it. All right. You can do it. I just want to leave you with this last one. And then we can take some questions. We have 15 minutes right on time. Promise. This is um, Christopher Robin talking to uh, Winnie the Pooh. Okay. I'm one of these folks. I never read any of these books when I was young. I was just, or am dyslexic. I was not diagnosed until I got into the military. Um, so I finally, once I learned how to read, um, was reading these to my children. And I remember coming across this. Um, and now there's tons of memes out there for it's, it's an amazing quote. Promise me you'll always remember you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and you're smarter than you think. Mm. All right. Well, that's it, my friends. Follow me, LarryBroughton.me or thelarrybroughton.com is my website. Um, and that's my- Thank you so much, Larry Broughton. Stop there. There we go. All right. So, so what, uh, I can stay around as long as you want for Q and A stuff. Very awesome. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to point out before we start Q and A is a great teaching point here. Um, really good speakers do this, like during their bio and their a little bit about me during the beginning. He's teaching along the way. You know, you can you can you can give a little bit of background, right? And then you share a story that um, teaches us something. So that's a great way of doing bios uh, when you're speaking is teaching. So it doesn't seem like, so this is what I did first and this is what I did. And then the, I did this and you just go, oh God, shoot me now. But if you- Can I tell you who helped me with that? Yeah. Adam Ace. Oh, very nice. Yeah. There's a great story, a great oh, segue well, that I use to right. this day. <laughs> Adam, you saw me give a talk once and you said, hey, this the story about you becoming a Green Beret. Um, in fact, I think you might have found the, found the picture for me. And I should show you guys sometime. Have, have me back. Where we transitioned. Um, anyway, we, we show a picture of the Girl Scouts. Like when the 
the, the recruiter said, Hey, you ought to go in the green berets. Like literally, I didn't know who the green berets were, right? The only green berets I knew were the girl scouts. Right. And so Adam, I think may have found the picture for me of this, these old girl scouts wearing green berets. And so we threw that in there, but anyway, that's in, in the normal <laughs> talks, but you're right. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of ways to be yeah. seeding lessons throughout. So go ahead, uh, Craig, I interrupted you. Yeah, no, that, I was just, I was just saying that's a great, that's a great way to uh, do that. Um, all right. So, um, well, I wrote a bunch of things down and I've heard this like, uh, 400 times and, uh, I've, I've written more stuff down. Um, any questions? We are. I know, that's right? Reminder. That's right, baby. Adam Ace, right. you're first. What do you have to say? Well, first, I just want to say I probably should have looked at the attendee list before I just came on and goofed on Larry right from the start, because not everybody out here I know or knows us. So uh, I just want everybody to know that you're in great hands. I've been in the mastermind since 2010, and it's really just an amazing experience. It's nice to see all of you on here. And I would not have missed seeing Larry for anything. I'm actually in a hotel room. I've got to leave here in a minute because I have a show tonight. So I'm going to go entertain some college kids. But the best thing about Larry and Craig is not only are they super knowledgeable and super experienced and great teachers, they're just good people. And those are the kind of people that you want to be around and learn from. I really look at them as my brothers. We've been through so much stuff together. So I was th thrilled to uh, jump on here. So these are the people you want to surround yourself with, be around with, and know that when they're telling you stuff it's coming from a great source and a great motivation and they really truly just want to help people and hmm. and show them the right way so there you go uh hey, but also hey where are uh, you where are you playing tonight uh, i'm in uh pennsylvania central pennsylvania so Very it's cool. uh, rainy and uh, about 54 degrees here right now so uh, but uh, we'll be doing it. And then the, the point that Larry was making. So Larry has this incredible resume and he used to do a speech and it basically went like this. I'm going to set up my PowerPoint. I'm going to talk. I used to be in the Green Berets. Does anybody have any water? And it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. You know, was, you know, everybody's been in the Green Berets, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, you might want to, you know make more of a point about that that's kind of something not everybody can say or uh you know plus people really admire and respect that so maybe point that out a little more i'm just just a, an idea it's crazy i thought he was doing that adam ace because you gave him comedy lessons yeah exactly exactly and then have it home but it uh larry i just uh, i love you man you're the best and uh there aren't many people that i've met that have just such a overwhelming desire to help entrepreneurs and make the world a better place. So, uh, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to take off and get over to the stage, but all right. uh, thank you all so much. And love thanks you. for, uh, uh, being here. Thanks Craig as always. And good love to see everybody. I'll nice see to meet see everybody. You, Adam. Be funny. We'll see you later. Be funny. Be funny. I'll try. I'll try. I, everybody will have a mask on. So I'm just going to pretend they're all laughing and smiling. <laughs> take care, buddy. See you, everybody. Yeah. All right, there, there's the, uh, the the comedy stylings of Adam Ace. Yeah. He is one funny dude. He's like a college comedian of the year, like, I don't know, four years in a row, something crazy. He's a pretty funny guy. All right, anyone have a question? Uh, Mike Wolf, I see his hand up. Hey, Larry, uh, thanks hey, so much for the great presentation. Good to see you. Um, I was wondering how you survived or how your hotels did during, obviously, uh, travel and tourism. Uh, was not it wasn't the peak year for that how do you survive uh, through that how'd your hotels do <laughs> it was not the peak year um <laughs> well I'll, I'll say this that um government reports uh, p reports from pkf colliers all the big data providers have said that the hospitality industry was the worst industry hit um in the the entire us i mean think about it restaurants i own restaurants as well Restaurants are closed down. There is an estimation that over one third of all restaurants in California that closed during COVID will never reopen. Um, that's according to the state of California. But according to the California Restaurant Association, they think it's as many as two thirds of those restaurants that closed will never reopen. Now, will other restaurants open in their place? Yes. But this is a country of small businesses. All right. This is a country that this is people's livelihood we're talking about here okay so um 
Craig and I were talking about numbers last night, I think it was. Um, but yeah, our revenues uh, were off um, about 75%. Some of the hotels we closed completely. Mm. Um, others, we had to stay open because they were CMBS loans. And so they were acquired. We would have been in default had we closed them, which means every day we are open. I mean, for all the hotels, literally, and, it's just, and still today, every day, well, that's not true, beginning in June. Um, but um, until June of this year, every day that we were open or closed, we were losing money. We were losing millions of dollars a month, mm. millions of dollars a month, okay? We had laid off, um, I think at the height, 72% of our team members were either furloughed or laid off. These are people who have to pay tuitions and pay rent and mortgages. It sucked and it still sucks. Um, and so will we ever dig out of it? Yeah, we're pivoting. And so we're trying a new business model. We still have some hotels. Um, we've sold a few at this point at a loss, um, you know, but we're now putting together you know, some ways to rebuild. I think we're gonna come back stronger than ever, but it's, it's like literally from the, you guys remember when this thing first hit, would they say two weeks to flatten the curve? Yes. We're going to be closed for a couple of a couple of months. I knew that that was BS. Compare your business to this next stat. Um, I forget what the exact number, so I'm just going to throw some numbers out there, but no, okay. 80 some percent of the businesses out there only have 28 days of free cash flow. Okay. Most businesses only have 26, 27, 28 days of cash flow. Okay. Now, when the government's telling you we are going to close your business for months on end, all right, I, I knew that that was not going to, it wasn't going to be, I, I knew it wasn't going to, I knew it was a lie, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just know business too well, you know? Um, so I knew that, uh, it was going to be touch and go. So since the beginning of this whole thing, I keep thinking I've got, like, I went into this thing with six months of cash flow. All right. I think I'm a better business person than most. So I had six months of cash flow, but I knew that that wasn't going to last. All right. Well, let me, let me back up. You guys have pro probably all of you have done pro formas for your business, right? If you haven't, you should. <laughs> this says, and then you do sensitivity analysis, right? When you're planning your next year, you think, okay, last year I did, let's pick a number, $500,000. Worst case scenario, I might be off 20% next year, right? Or I might be up 10% next year. Whoever budgets 100% drop in revenue? <laughs> Nobody, right. but the hospitality industry had to do that. A lot of other businesses could keep on going and tweak the business model a little bit here and, and there, right? So Mike, it's a tough question. I'm sorry I'm rambling on it, but it sucked and it still sucks. I but I still have a level of optimism that we're gonna turn it around. What's that? I'm so sorry to hear that, but uh, glad you're, you're doing, it looks like you're doing well, you look happy and healthy, yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, we've had to change the business model. We're going to come out of it. It will not be like it was before. We won't do the numbers next year, what we did. I mean, when you, you know, I won't say it publicly. But Craig knows the numbers. They're big numbers, right, Craig? Um, yeah, it's, and, uh, it's like uh, it's, uh, nine, nine, nine figures. Yeah. 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 That's what it was in 2019, right? And um, we won't do that in 2021. We won't do it in 2022. Um, but the only way we're going to do it moving forward to get back, get back up in the nine figure range is through um, uh, more acquisitions. And we'll, we'll be doing that. Yeah. Great. But um, yeah, thanks. Thanks but, for, uh, yeah. thanks for sharing. I have to jump actually on another call here huh? in a couple of minutes, but it was, don't, uh, don't. You, and you might hurt yourself. Well, I'll say this, the way to keep going to maintain optimism when, when all else fails, serve other people. When you don't know what to do, serve someone else help someone else. Okay. And that's what I've had to do throughout the last year and a half. So thanks, Mike. Good question. I'm gonna uh, Judy Schreiner in the house. Hello, Judy. Hi, Larry. Hi, everybody. Hello. Okay. So what you, that was my question also, but so you went through what happened and what happened and what happened. What I'm curious about is, you know, your, your video asking for help was very, 
poignant. Oh, I, I never you're going back any- a year and a half. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. And I never heard anything after that. What I want to know is what did you go through personally? And, you know, how bad did it get for you personally, not numbers wise, but emotionally? And how did you uh, get out of it? What did you do to handle it all emotionally? Well, I'm still in it. It's still a daily battle, to be honest with you. Um, financially, so as I said, we were losing millions of dollars a month. And when you're a business owner, those cash shortfalls have to come from somewhere. And so they're coming I can from imagine. Me. And so, um, yeah, I basically used all of my personal savings um, to keep employees employed. Did people help you? Not nearly to the extent that I thought they might, but I got to realize, you know, um, that um, everyone's, listen, people used to say, oh, we're all in the same boat. And I said, no, yeah. we're not all in the same boat. No. We're all in the same storm, but we are not all in the same boat. Yeah. You know, um, because some people's boats bigger than other people's boats, mm-hmm. right? Um, but no, we were all in the same shit storm. Um, so no, I didn't get the, the help. Some people did. You know, and that was awesome. That was awesome. You know, it was enough to cover a couple of payrolls for our home office, which we cut back by 70 some percent uh, at at that point. I've not taken, I personally still have not taken a paycheck or any money from the company since February of 2019. Um, So, yeah, I mean, but, you know, I used to, and I'm hoping I can maintain some of the the habits. I mean, I used to never cook at home. Ever, I used to eat out all the time. You know, I, you know, when you've got money, you spend money. Right. And I lost all the discipline that, um, that you need, you know, and I was fat and happy. And so, um, but from the emotional point, Judy, it was hard. It was touch and go, to be honest with you. There were days where I was having really bad ideations. Like what the hell am I doing? Yeah. You know? I'm all alone. I, I wasn't, but this is what, you know, you get to the woe is me yeah. uh, thing. Thank God I had some friends who, who would, you know, pull me out of it. And, you know, but for the most part, I maintained a level of optimism. Like, no, this is only going to make me stronger. This is going to be a great comeback story, mm-hmm. you know? And when I would look at the other folks in the hotel industry, like, so, so we have an independent hotel, we're, called, we're considered an independent hotel company. Um, most, the numbers are not in yet, but most of our competitors are either closed shop, went bankrupt or acquired by one of the big major brands and they're no longer around, but we're still, we're still, we're still fighting. So we're living to fight another day, but it's been hard. It's been hard to be honest. Well, I admire you greatly for Thanks, Judy. everything that you, that you've gone through and pulling yourself up by your shoelaces or bootstraps or whatever the hell you needed to, <laughs> to pull up, you know? He has slip-on shoes. White pants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, uh, anyone else with a question or a comment or a... Uh... Let me throw this out, Craig. Yeah. Some of the folks on this call have been awesome about reaching out. You know, Craig said, hey, come talk to my mastermind people. Tim Gillette said, hey, come on my podcast, my radio show. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and that means a lot too. And some of you folks did send in, you know, and by the way, that video where I asked the plea for, for, for help, that was not for me personally, that was to help pay for health insurance and, and wages for my team. Right. I literally didn't touch that, that yeah. money that went to our, um, our, our accountant and, um, and there's John Lindbacher. Oh my gosh. There's a friendly face. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's what uh, that's what we did. Yeah. I just felt like I've got I've got to take care of the team. I've got yeah. to take care of the team. Um, yeah, John Limbach basically lives on a boat now. Oh, good. Yeah, in, all that lifestyle in the Pacific Ocean. Wow, living the life. All right, I had a phenomenal twenty twenty. <laughs> What'd you say, John? I had a phenomenal twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people did. A lot yeah. of people did. No, you're right. A lot of people did, you know. Most did not, but a lot did. Yeah. But I've got time. If anybody else wants to stay on for more questions, I've got time. If not, then that's fine too. Yeah, I, I have a uh, fantasy football draft I have to get to in uh, 15 minutes. Okay. You know, that's why I had to move this up an hour, you know. Uh. Draft night. <laughs>
good. <laughs> um, but Larry, once again, man, you are such an inspiration. You're so awesome, so knowledgeable. But you know what? You are you are a great person that mm -hmm. is willing to do, uh, you know, just like at the drop of a hat, just drop everything for us little people. So, so thank you. So <laughs> No, serious. Yes, us little people really thank you, Larry. Yeah, no, for me, I mean, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm a little guy here in Texas now. You know, hey, with, Craig, I said so, Steph, Stephanie Hastings has a question. Can we try to oh, get that? Yes, in? yes, of course. Hello, uh, I just wanted to um, really say thank you because what you said about integrity is based on courage. That's mm -hmm. huge because. I was having some struggles, you know, like, like we acknowledged, you know, 2020 was very, you know, with everybody's experience, it varied. But for me, leading into 2021, it was really hard because of health issues. And then I just felt like, you know, it's hard to get out of your own way. Like, the, like you said, the biggest problem was myself, because mm -hmm. all the negative talk about my health issues and things where I really wasn't being in a place of service for people I really cared about and had good intentions for. Mm. And I love that phrase that integrity is based on courage, but mm. it also has this slant toward grace, giving yourself some grace. And I appreciate that. So thanks for bringing that around. Yeah. One of the mantras that we tried to live by in our organization right out of the gate, well, there's actually two. Um, and the first one is that um, it's about gratitude, that gratitude and anxiety cannot live in the same space at the same time. All mm. right. And so when you're feeling anxious, stop and think, up, think about, all right, what am I actually grateful for? All right. And the other thing is this, because everyone's stressed out. Everyone, most businesses are working, doing more with less, is to offer grace, patience, and forgiveness freely and often. Mm. How would your life be if you were given grace, <laughs> patience and forgiveness freely and often. And how about if you offer that to other people, would life be a little bit different for you? Mm -hmm. Right. So offer grace, patience and forgiveness freely and often. I love That's that. Writer downer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go, I, I watched the tape over again. So <laughs> oh, there <you> go. <laughs> very, very great. Yeah. And this will be available tomorrow. I'll put this on our site. But you all heard it already, but you can watch it again, which I highly encourage. Uh, Roger has a question. I see just a comment. Comment, yeah. In your attitude alone made this presentation all worthwhile, plus the I'm other sorry. things. I'm sorry, say that again? Eoritude. Oh, Eoritude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. You know, well. Uh, you, know you, you said... Uh, you said uh, pick out the three negative people in my life. I yeah. honestly have zero. Yeah, that's good. I don't have any. I honestly do not. You have to exercise those energy vampires. And that was a hard thing to do. Sometimes, my friends, you're married to them. No, I'm not. Sometimes they're family members. I know, but sometimes they're family members. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm not saying go get a divorce, but get therapy. Do yeah. something. Um, and if it's a family member, just because... Listen, um, you can be friendly to people and not be friends. Did you catch that? You can be friendly and not be friends. All right. And the same thing goes for family members. All right. You have to set boundaries in your life. Set appropriate boundaries. Yep. So good for you, Craig. That's awesome. Yeah. Down to zero. Down yep. to zero. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, just out of respect for time. Yep. I don't see any more hands. Uh, once again, let's hear for Larry. I, un unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves and let's hear it for Larry B. Thank you. Woo thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much, Larry. Thanks, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Really Thanks, good Larry. Job. Thank you. Right. Go get them. Outstanding. Em. Love you, buddy. And thank you so, so much. Again, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.